In the connected era, information is always at your fingertips. What makes your message stand out? In this series, we are going to meet a diverse range of people whose messages are influencing the masses. Let's find out how. In this episode of Gallery of Ideas Connect, we have an inspiring, engaging, energetic and entirely entertaining interview with the legendary Mark Bowden. The number one body language professional in the world. Clients include leading business people, politicians, presidents of Fortune 500 companies and prime ministers. He's written best-selling books about body language and human behavior. Mark Bowden! So, great to be here with you. I've experienced going on in front of thousands and in some cases millions of audience. You aren't predestined to be a great communicator. You learn that. Everything can be learned. So, you've already decided whether you like me or not. <laughs> I'm Mark Bowden and I'm an expert in human... to Gallery of Ideas. What an honor to have you here with us. It's really well, amazing. Uh, After so pleasure. long, our audience here in Barcelona, they're so excited about this interview. There, there has been so many questions, people asking me, Patricia, please ask him this or ask him that. The first one is, where are you from? What happens? I mean, when, when did you get to North America? What was the shift there where, you know, from where you come from? And what inspires the little mark to become the world-renowned body language expert. So, uh, I was originally born in a town in England called Northampton, which is 60 miles north of London. And when I was uh, around the age of 17, 18, I moved down to London in order to study there. And I was studying uh, visual arts, performing arts, how to tell stories with pictures essentially. And I was in that area because I'd been obsessed as a kid with, with images and how you, how you tell those stories with pictures, how images and especially moving images, especially of people can influence and persuade other people. So I studied in that area. I spent many years working in the area of uh, performing arts and visual arts and helping um, you know, all kinds of things, film, TV, theater, tell the stories that they wanted to, to tell by helping them construct the exact images they would need in order to trigger audiences into patterns of behavior. I then started working in business and politics around that. By the, by the way, at that time, I was now uh, living in London. Uh, London is still, I think, the, the city that I've lived in the longest yeah probably the lot yes yeah it would still be the city i've lived in uh longest and i was working all over the world as well in this field in this area and then 13 years ago uh myself and uh tracy my wife we were having our first kid lex and we had the ability to come to toronto and live here uh, tracy's canadian and it seemed a, a great opportunity to try out and the right time to try out somewhere else and take advantage of Canada's um, proximity, not only obviously to its own uh, market, but also the US market and the world market from, mm -hmm. from there for, for what I do, which is uh, helping people all over the world stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they communicate. And really that's from the standpoint of nonverbal communication, working out what you can do exactly with your body language in order to win trust and credibility. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, related to a talk that I gave uh, 2013, uh, heads of, uh, in Toronto, um, I have a feeling that we are living now in this uh, world that we, we are almost obliged to be happy all the time, right? Mm. So there's this sense of happiness that it, it's related to success. You need to be happy all the time. You need to be authentic. You need to go out there and, and show your true self. And then you come <laughs> with your talk the importance of being inauthentic. Bang! Right. <laughs> Just break all the rules. And so, look, first of all, um, 
obviously there's something in the title about being inauthentic, which absolutely is the exact opposite of what I felt to be the culture and the, the overriding uh, zeitgeist of, of, of a certain niche of the world and this idea of being authentic. And also what I, what I might call authenticity shaming, which is uh, people saying to others, you know, I don't think you're really being authentic. And, and that being some kind of insult, as if they'd know if somebody's being authentic or not, truly being themselves, as if they'd know that. People had set themselves up as these kind of mind readers of being able to tell if somebody's being truthful or honest or authentic, you know, true to themselves. Only that person can ever work out whether they're being true to themselves. Uh, so, so I was seeing a, a lot of this going about, and, and, and as you can probably imagine, it really annoyed me. Rich, I just found it very, very, um, uh, uh, you know, very, very annoying. And also I found it very closed-minded because it didn't take into account the understanding that we have, we play roles in lives. We have personas. Absolutely. We're, we're very complex human beings. And, and, and one of the joys of being human is you can pick on aspects of yourself that you specifically want to bring forward to people at a certain time and a certain place to better serve them, to better serve you. Even if it feels uncomfortable to you, you can bring forward an aspect of your personality a persona especially in professional circles you might need, need to bring forward a bit of a professional persona to help and serve other people and that's what i would believe is social this we are in now the medium of happiness that's the, that's the culture that's around fashion yes yeah and you've got to understand that we all have the ability to create this media we're all therefore consuming this happy media and then looking at our own lives and going, God, why am I, why am I, am I not as successful and happy as Mark was on that, uh, on that webcast that he was doing today? <laughs> yeah, and no one can enjoy anything anymore uh, just by experiencing, let's say you go to a mountain and you are observing the nature. There is, there is no space for this anymore. You have to be in the mountain, selfie, Hashtag mountain. Wow, I arrived. I'm here. I'm sharing the location. <laughs> there are many qualities that you have that I admire in a person. You are um, a very open minded, friendly, funny, wise. But there is one quality that I love, which is you're very humble. You know, it's, I have a feeling that it's never about you. You're always trying to, uh, you know, to create greatness for the other. How, how do you see, uh, you know, the people that are still struggling with that mindset of I have to compete to survive? Because I believe it is more about uh, being, you know, in, in a togetherness space. Yeah, good, 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 good question. So, um, first of all, I would say, though it may not come, a, come across to you uh, for reasons that I'll, I'll explain in a moment. Uh, I am very competitive. However, I'm competitive in a really small area, which is the area of nonverbal communication. L listen, just never compete at anything you that lots of players in. Yeah. <laughs> but you're always sharing everything from Joe Navarro. You're always helping yeah, all your colleagues. You know, so that's yeah, of course, because there's not many of us out there. Why wouldn't I? I mean, it's, 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 and, and they're competitors to me. Uh, gosh, you know that they, they, they have they have different niches to me. They're thinking about it in a different way. They have different backgrounds to me. I mean, we, we all have the same aim, pretty pretty much entirely. I would probably say. Um, so you know, let's take take Joe, who's a just a fantastic guy and a great uh, expert in his area and, and an incredible incredible background that gives him that that wealth of of, of knowledge and, and massive credibility you know why would i need to compete against against him can i compete against him like don't compete against somebody you can't win <laughs> i don't know whether i can win against against joe in his area i don't have it but there's no way i can't i can't sit here and go yeah you know i was one of the youngest person people ever to be uh, taken into the fbi so, no, <laughs> not, i wasn't never been in the fbi 
That's Joe Hatt, extraordinary guy, extraordinary guy, one of the youngest people ever to be in the FBI. Extraordinary. Came to America not knowing English, taught himself English. It, I mean, no, I've not, not, not done that. Um, you know, interrogated and interviewed, um, you know, some extraordinary criminal minds. So, no, I've not, no, not me. I haven't done it. So, so there's no point in competing in areas that you cannot win, or in my mind. I know there might be people out there who go, hey, yeah, no, go on, go on, compete at something you can't win at. It's like, no, I'm only alive so long. Thank uh, you, <laughs> Do something I can win at <laughs> and, be the, and be the best at. So, yes, I am competitive, but I'm being really careful about choosing exactly where I'm competitive so I stand myself the best chance of success in that area because I know that success feels very, very good. And when you're successful at something, you tend to get just more successful at it. And the key is, is getting your first moments of success so the body and mind get used to that idea and they go, the body and mind go, okay, I think we could, we could manage a bit more of that. <laughs> so, so I kind of worked this out and I've decided only be, only, only compete at stuff you can, you can win at. Um, but there's so also, there is, yeah, there's also the sense, um, you know, collaborating with others and sharing others' uh, you know, creations and things that people that are very competitive, um, well, maybe taking it in a bad way, saying that they are even jealous of that, you know, potential or something that they can never become because it's completely different from their path, their stories. And, um, and I think that's when that person gets really limited and there is no way you can grow. So for me, the areas of growth is actually taking the, you know, the example, your example, which I, I find it fantastic. I think the way you always are pushing everyone in the industry and, and highlighting everyone as a work, you know, for me, it's sure, because, because you can't do it. You can't do it on your own. You can't, you exactly. can't get, that's um, my point, yeah. Yeah, you can't get an area recognized and, and really helpful to people on your own. You know, uh, Joe helps promote that, that uh, area. Amy Cuddy helps promote that area. The more successful they are, the more people go, oh, yeah, body language. That's a kind of interesting. Industry growth. Exactly. Yeah. Um, th th so, so the more I can help promote uh, them, the more people uh, might reach out uh, to me. There's another guy uh, out there, a uh, little newer on the scene. I mean, he's been been a, around this area a long, long time, but but mainly working in the uh, in the U.S. Um, Army, and so been dedicated to that. But a guy called Chase Hughes. Take a look at him. Get does some incredible work in this area. Uh, just retired from the U.S. Army um, a couple of weeks ago. Is now out there delivering some incredible. Uh, training around nonverbal communication. Um, so a little little promotion of, of, of <laughs> the more the more I, I promote uh, Chase, the more people learn about this area. The more they get fascinated, and the more they might go, "Hey, Mark, come in and do a keynote, or come and train my people." Or absolutely, uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't hurt me. Look, you know, there's 7.6 billion people on the planet right now, and most of them are not thinking about me. <laughs> really <laughs> yeah most of them sure? have no idea <laughs> that i exist and, and 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 how can i get more of them to know that i exist well it might not be about shouting about me it might be about shouting <laughs> about other other people so that they at least get the idea of the of the of the area and then come into my world Um, your books you've you've written several books and the last one you've written with me with Tracy yeah your wife so what inspired you guys to write truth and lies what was behind? yeah yeah what inspired us well uh, like a lot of things in my life um, uh, first of all there was no inspiration we were just asked to write it the publishers went oh, will you will you write will you write a book <laughs> on reading body language uh, so that was their specific thing. We want you to write a book on reading body language. And pretty much instantly, within a few minutes, uh, I'd sent back a message saying, no, no, I'm not going to write that. Um, because there's a lot of 
books out there on... And you've written reading. already, no? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, written, I've written two on how to use your body language to influence and persuade. I've written one on uh, uh, neuro, evolutionary neural architecture, the way your brain is built. And, the, the primitive. And, and why, therefore, you behave in certain ways and other people behave in certain ways and, and, and they annoy the hell out of you and what you can do about that. <laughs> um, and, and, and there were already a lot of good books by others uh, around reading body language. And I was very unsure as to what I could really do to make this world, you know, to add to that world. Anyway, so, so instantly we kind of said no. And then I thought, oh, I shouldn't have said no because I should think a little bit care more carefully about what would a really good book on reading body language look like if I wrote it? What would the the perfect, you know, great book on reading body language looked like if I wrote it. And what I came up with is it would actually be a book on critical thinking disguised as a book on body language. So it would help people think better about other people. Um, and they they learn how to do that because they were interested in reading body language. Now, they would end up reading knowing how to do that, but they'd know a, a more critical thinking process, a better process for that. So um, Truth and Lies, what people are really thinking, it takes you through a critical thinking process so that you can think better and more accurately about others. It does have all the really great body language stuff that you want to know, like, you know, what does this mean? Or what does this mean? Or, you know, what if they, if they touch that, you know, what it's got all of that in it. But what it's really trying to do is help you think more carefully and accurately about that. So, so that's what inspired us to write it. Now, it's also the first ever book on body language that is gender neutral. So at no point does it ever go, hey, guys do this and girls do this. Men do this and women do this. It, uh, because the majority of that has zero accuracy to it people do all kinds of stuff genders and sexes tend to be uh, and their behaviors be uh, amplified or um or diminished by culture by ideas about how certain genders or sexes should perform because physically we're absolutely uh, you know male and female uh, uh, masculine, feminine, feminine, we're more similar than we're ever, ever going to have any differences. What tends to happen is ideas about us enforce or, or constrain or amplify the behaviors that we have. And then societies or cultures go, hey, that's male, that's female. So we've stripped that out. And of course, Tracy was a, a huge part of that. It, it's very difficult as uh, a male to write uh, without gender bias. Very difficult for a female to write without gender bias. We all have bias. So having the two of us write it not only brought some really big new ideas, but helped with that idea of trying to eradicate the gender bias. Again, not because eradicating gender bias is, uh, you know, a, a, a popular thing to do right now, simply because it's accurate. It's just more accurate. It is. Just more, more truthful about the way people behave and also how to think about people. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's the, uh, the impulse for it. Mark, there is a question with, regard, with regards Dr. Albert Mirabian, where he explains about, he has this formula about nonverbal communication where 93% is nonverbal and 7% is verbal. Why do you think this study got so much attention? And um, what are your thoughts about this, uh, this study? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I've, I've looked at this, uh, the study, um, as opposed to many other people who've never looked at the study. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good study. Uh, done a long time back now uh, with with in the seventies yeah in the seventies with less people in it than you'd need now to make it a a robust study. However, all that said, what he comes up with is that the data 
that your brain wants in order to make a prediction about somebody else's feeling and intention towards you, the data that your brain wants, it mainly wants to see images of that person. It somewhat wants to hear the tonality of their voice, and it really has no concern for what they're saying, okay? And that gets mashed into this idea of 93% of all communication is nonverbal. Now, he never said that. Never said that. He kind of said what I just said to you a while back, which is your brain, when it wants to know, when it's thinking, I wonder what that person is thinking about me or feeling about me right now. It goes, hmm. What are they doing? And it does that. It want, the, the majority of the data, he would have said maybe 55% of the data that it's wanting to make that decision is the images that it's seeing and the context of those images as well and how they move. Uh, the brain's also going, oh, how, how do they sound? What's their tonality? What's the music of their voice? And about a third of the information that it's wanting to take in is that musicality. And then only 7% is the words. But that isn't 93% of all communication is nonverbal. If that was the case, you could go and watch any feature film with the sound turned off, and you would get exactly, ex pretty much exactly what anybody with the sound turned on was getting. A book would be pointless, because a book is... Verb, you'd never listen to radio or podcasts. Be pointless because because you know ninety three percent of of all the communication would would be gone. So obviously yeah. that's not true. That's yeah. just not. That's a, a a total misinterpretation. How to wow a room especially for the people in the industry that the, there's coaches and trainers that are maybe because you know you've, you've trained and you've worked with uh, high politicians mm -hmm. uh, business leaders you know 500 fortune you know teams and so on so for that person that is starting you know to get that first powerful client and he needs to enter and make that impact and make that powerful person look at him and trust him what would be mm -hmm. you know the, let, give three tips if you All right. can. Um, okay, so here's three tips, and, and, and then I'm going to move them a little bit away from body language because, in terms of, to an extent, in terms of the, the body language piece, uh, it's really about using what I call the truth plane. If you want to know about that, just get over to truthplane.com because it's just it's just full of stuff on on that 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 really you'd only get to hear if you were training with me personally. So here's my top tip, and it does come in three parts, and it's and it goes like this. Uh, make a choice, make it bigger, and keep it tidy. Make a choice, make it bigger, keep it tidy. So when you, when you want to wow people, first of all, make a choice as to what you're going to do. A choice, not many choices. Choose one thing. The key to really good performance, and especially nonverbal performance, is being razor sharp, being focused on what you're going to get across. Yeah, so make that choice. And then all you do is make it bigger. Yeah, you're now, gonna, you're now going to amplify that choice. So the initial choice that you make is usually a safe choice. Here's the next bit is, is keep it tidy. What we tend to do is we make the choice and we make it bigger. And then we go, oh, and we'll add a bit of this and we'll add a bit of that. And we'll add a bit of this just to countermeasure the risk of this. And then you muddy it. You just muddy it. What about one-to-one -one sessions where somebody from the agency hire you brought in front of this guy or this mm -hmm. woman, and then suddenly they look, oh, okay, who are you? What are you supposed to do with me? You know, what do I have to do? So, you know, that sense of, I don't trust you. I don't know who you are. How do you get them to instantly look at you and say, wow, I like you. I'm going to open up, and we're going to start our session. Yeah, so um, I've got one of those tomorrow. I'm with um, uh, I'm with a... Uh, a leader tomorrow who is a leads a government. So, uh, yeah. So um, now, first of all, you got to get in the room. Okay. Now, it, <laughs> first step. So first, first point. Like you just you can't walk up to these people 
no, on yeah. the whole and knock on their office. There's a whole bunch of security and you have to give people passports and they have to frisk, you know, check you for weapons and all. <laughs> and they do background searches on you and all, all kinds of stuff. They call over your underwear to see. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so let's just say that on the whole, before you're even getting in that room, you have proved yourself or been proven to others who look after that person in some way. But that's, that's not enough because not, before you go in there, they're very worried. <laughs> they're like, oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're like, is this going to be okay? Is he entering my space? You know, you are. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's, it, it's, um, it's a risk for them to introduce somebody new uh, in the team. Anyway. What, what you need to do is, is, is look at them and say, it's okay, don't worry, it's going to be fine. It's going to be all right. You're going to have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always say. Yeah. And, and uh, when you walk in that room, now also when you walk in that room and you see that person and you've seen them on TV and you know what they run and how much power they have, something inside you goes, oh, <laughs> all right, okay, wow. Uh, that's the person, isn't it? Yes, they're the person who runs runs a lot of stuff. They, yeah, okay. And then you kind of go, oh, wow, what have I done now? What have I done now? What kind of mess have I got myself into now? So, you, you know, you can get some performance anxiety around that. You can get some, um, so you've got to manage that for yourself. In your case, it's something that you are totally in your flow, right? So, as described by uh, Chicks and Mihai, you know, the, you have the challenge at hand and your abilities, uh, you know, kind of line up. Obviously, if you are in a situation where your skills are very low and the challenge is so big, as uh, Czechs and Mihai says, Mihai yeah. and Mihai, you know, obviously it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's not going to work out. But in your case, you are there in a situation like this, you are in the flow. So anyone that is in a situation like yours, that has the skills, that's confident that they have the knowledge to help that person if they are a trainer or a coach, that's the first step. The second one is, it's just a person. <laughs> like you with all the basic needs. <laughs> like, no, it's just another person. So I think that, and also I would say, not taking everything so seriously because that's where we get sometimes trapped in our mind. You know, like, oh my gosh, tomorrow I have this thing with this person and I can't sleep because this person is that uh, important. So I guess for me, it's the combination of three. Having the skills to be able to do it as otherwise get out of there, um, being confident because, you know, you know your thing and uh, not take it so seriously. Now, Mark, to end our interview, I want to, mm -hmm. to do a game with you. A, bit a, a, a challenge. <laughs> so, I'm going to point out five Brazilian gestures, very specific, oh, okay. probably never seen in your life. Okay, fascinating. Five Brazilian wow. gestures, and I want you to decipher and understand. tell me what do you think they mean. Okay, from Brazilian. Okay. Oh wow. Okay, so we're 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 talking. We're totally talking a different language. Here. Yes, okay. totally. Mm. So it's just okay. not verbal. Okay, I'm going to help wow. you with micro expressions. I'm going to help you with micro expressions. Okay? okay, so let's start with um, this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it feels to me like I've, so. What's interesting is I've never seen that. <laughs> it's very Brazilian, I've yeah. Never seen that. Okay, so so it feels so you had with it this downward turn of the of the mouth. So so there's some kind of negativity in there, and it feels to me like you're you're brushing and hitting stuff away. So so I'm going to say something about. Uh, brushing off and casting away something that's bad. So it's kind of like um, we're not we're not bothered with with that. <laughs> we with don't that. care. We not don't interesting. Care. Yeah. <laughs> right, what a gesture. When when would like what is, what are circumstances that you might do that? Is it casual gesture? Is it a yeah. formal gesture? No, we do it a lot casual, more casual. Yeah. No, yeah, formal, okay. no, no, formal. It's more, I don't really care. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> it's so quick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because in, 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 in European culture, we might have the, the, the run along, brush away, it's just yeah. with one hand. Yeah. Uh, this, 
I mean, this is interesting because it takes more energy. It's bigger. Yeah, it does. Like you can see it more. Whereas <laughs> we we kind of go, oh, we're not bothered with the, not bothered with that. And it's a little it's a little gesture. Yeah. But then uh, Europe can be a bit colder, and you don't want to do too you don't want to do yeah, too to big a gesture. Yeah, because gestures. you'll just you'll open up your body and you'll get cold too quick. Whereas, <laughs> you know, like whatever. <laughs> nice, nice and warm there. <laughs> All right, second one. Give me another. Lovely. Oh. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. So there's there's something there was something in your face as well. <laughs> kind of had that it was slightly kind of almost a little bit seductive, a little bit kind of mm. Mm, what's going on there? And, and, and there's friction between two things here, yeah? And so I'm guessing it's about a couple of people getting on well. It's like, oh, they're getting on. Oh, my God, you're they're a genius. They're getting on well, aren't they? They're getting on well. They're <laughs> matching up something. Nice. They're, they're, making, they're, they're, making some, they're making some heat. Yeah, they're planning. Yeah. Yeah, they're into something here. Yeah, so we <laughs> use that when it's like, yeah, this too, yeah. Mm. So is that is that gesture? Would that be about people getting on um, at a at a at a, at a friend or a sexual level, or could it be two business people who are getting well, it on? Could be planning anyone something. planning something? They said, "Oh, this, this too." Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's like they're rubbing they're rubbing two sticks together. They're making some fire. Yeah, it's not sexual. You know, not related to sexual. It's just you know we are into something that we don't know. This too. Usually, oh, okay, so it's 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 uh, whatever it is is you don't know at that point. It's like yeah. we don't know they're What's up to something, there? but we don't but know what it is. Something, yeah. So you okay, go. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah. nice. good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness! Two you got another? Have you got five. another? You are amazing. <laughs> okay, let me see another one. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Gosh. Okay. The ice cream in the head. <laughs> okay i think that's okay so 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 it's a, a a fist to the the head so there's some kind of impact there hammer-like impact to the thinking hammer-like impact to the thinking it's like i don't so it must be something about i've got it wrong or i don't understand it Oh, I can't believe I just did it, you know. Okay. I'm so stupid. Oh, okay. how can I have done this? How can I have done this? <laughs> you good. Oh. Okay, so, so yeah, in, 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 in a lot of kind of European, North American gesture, it's more the slap to the head rather than the, the this has a lot more. Yeah. Oh, impact. how stupid. Oh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that gesture. <laughs> Good. All right, so, good. so two more. Three, for, three for three, okay, good. Okay. What else you got? What um, else you got? Okay, this one. Ah. Okay. I think that is something that is something like a more casual idea of the full hand push away, which says, you know, get out of my get out of my territory. But this is <laughs> This is like this is like you really. This is when you don't need to make much effort about this. Always. It's like, come on, get it, get out. Instead of like, just hold back, get yeah. get back, get out. This is like, oh, come on, you know, go get on. out, go get away out. with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lovely, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. You are amazing. Okay, uh, last one. So let me yeah. think. Difficult one for you. Uh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, this. Okay, okay. Um. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so we got a fist against a flat, yeah. flat hand. Okay, I'm going to say, because, you know, we really are into the world of, of hand signals here, and there's so much that can happen in these. Yeah. It, 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 it becomes more like uh, language, whereby it's very easy to interpret this wrong. So I'm going to go with with what I can know very well, which is it makes this sound. Let me help you with my face. Yeah. Hmm. So your your face is is one of has a pain in it. It's like. Mm. Um. So and the and the sound is final. So. I don't know. It's something. It was something about something being final and it causing pain in some or distress in some way. I'm totally screwed. 
<laughs> oh, okay. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, totally. Yeah, okay. So it is. Oh, okay. It is related to fame. Well, ah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so this is the, like, final. I know. That's final. Sad. Look how totally. final that oh, okay. sound is. And then there's the pain in the face. And you can even Should... use it in the group. We are totally screwed, yeah. Oh, okay. Can it be done without the face? Or does it need that, yeah, that no, pain before... in the face? Yeah, yeah. They can just go. Okay. You know, but usually okay. the face will somehow. Right, uh, the face will react. Yeah. It's no good. If I, if I just do it, deadpan face. <laughs> they will okay. understand. The Brazilian will understand. So, okay. What's going on? We screwed. What happened? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love well I love all this. <laughs> Bravo! You are amazing. <laughs> love it, love it. I knew I was going to have a good time. That was great fun. That was great fun. Um, Listen, it's great because I, I learned something today. <laughs> what's, what's pretty, look, here's the thing, great thing about my world and the world of body language is, is you've, you never know it all. You never know it all. You have a day like this where you go, wow, I didn't, you know, because the, these different cultures, you know, it's not just Brazil that, that's all over the world. There's these different things that 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 happen that that are language. <laughs> They're like real language, which means what you know. This might happen somewhere else on the planet, and it means it's something totally. entirely different. Totally. You know? uh, like the, you know that that if you did yeah. that in American Sign Language, that's light. So. Oh. <laughs> So, you know, you go around, you know, with some, some um, you know, people who have impaired hearing and start doing that. They'll be like, yeah, no, the lights are on. <laughs> I'm trying to go away. I'm looking for the lights. <laughs> no, and you go away. All right, we switched on the lights. What's, what's up? So, so um, you know, That's and some, some body language is language. It's a signal. And, it, and those signals, because they're, they're cultural, can mean things in different areas. And some of it is, is universal. So it was great to be introduced to, to those ones. The Brazilian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Mark, thank you so much. You are brilliant, beautiful. Love it. Love your minds. Love your style. Love your... Openness is just wonderful to have you here, and uh, send a big kiss to Tracy and, and thank you very much. And we send a Brazilian kiss, which is like this. Mwah. Oh, thank you. Very back, back at you. <laughs> back at you. Lovely. Thanks for thanks for having me. It's been a great conversation, and uh, I hope we'll we'll talk again. <laughs>